When you have at least one independent variable that is between subjects, something like gender, and then at least one independent variable that is within subjects, something like quizzes, then you'll want to do something called a mixed analysis of variance. So I'm going to do a two by five mixed analysis of variance. Um, I'm calling it a two by five because gender is my first independent variable is between subjects and there's two different levels and quiz or time is my second independent variable and this is a within subject variable and there's five different levels. So I'm going to be looking at um, how people did on the quizzes um, in terms of, you know, from quiz one to five and also in terms of gender. To do this, you go to analyze general linear model and then repeated measures. You can do, if you didn't have any repeated measures or within subject factors, then you could use this dialog. But anytime you have a within subject variable, you'll have to use the repeated measures dialog. Okay, similar to the repeated measures ANOVA, um, you will get this dialog which asks you what is the name of your within subject factor and how many levels do you have? So I'm going to put um, quizzes in here and we have five different levels. So I'm going to put five and then add it and then press define. SPSS knows that uh, if you set up your data properly, you should have five different variables. So I'm going to add these five quiz variables in the correct order in time um, that is listed by SPSS. And then I'm going to put gender in my between subjects factor. Note that in this dialog, you can also do a covariate um, if you wished. I'm going to request plots for each one of the different effects. So I have a main effect of gender, a main effect of quizzes, and then the interaction between these two. Because quizzes has more levels, I'm going to put that on the horizontal axis and then use separate lines for gender. And that's because it'll make it easier to interpret. Then you press continue. Go into options and check off descriptive statistics, estimate of effect size, observed power, and because we have a between subjects factor, that's gender, we also need to request homogeneity of variance test. Press continue and then press OK. Similar to when we do a repeated measures ANOVA, we get the, the list of variables and the order that they should be in. So this is your time to check to make sure that you've done it correctly. For the between subjects factor, um, similar to a one way between subjects factor ANOVA, you get the levels and how many participants are in each level. And then you get the descriptive statistics, similar to a two way ANOVA, um, that break it down based by um, the levels of one independent variable and the levels of the other variable. In this class, we're going to ignore boxes M and multivariate tests. And then we get our test of sphericity, which SPSS automatically provides us with because we have a within subject factor. In this case, Mockley's test of sphericity is significant because this value here is less than 0.05. Because it's significant, it means that we do not have sphericity. We cannot assume sphericity. Um, that means that we do not have equal covariances and variances. So in our test of within subjects effects, we have to read from the greenhouse geyser line. So for the effect of quizzes, we can see that it is significant. The effect is the, the p-value is 0 0.02, which is less than 0 0.05, which means that somewhere between the five levels of quizzes, there's a significant effect. In order to figure out what that is, we'll need to do post hoc test. Next, we have the interaction between quizzes and gender. And reading from the greenhouse geyser line, we can see that this is not significant. So there's no significant interaction between quizzes and gender. 
From our knowledge of two-way ANOVAs, we, we know that there should be a third effect here. So we have the main effect of one variable, the interaction between the two, but we don't have the main effect of the other variable. And that's because our other variable, gender, is a between subject factor. So it's not going to be listed in the test of within subject effects. Instead, we have to scroll down to our test of between subjects effects. And here you can see our effect of gender, which is not significant. This is our test of homogeneity variance um, for the gender factor within each level of quiz. This would affect our post hoc test for gender if we had to do them. In this case, it's not necessary because our effect of gender is not significant. After that, we get our means plots and our interaction plot. So if we had to do post hoc tests, then we would go back into the same dialog, repeated measures, we would leave everything the same, and we would just have to remember that uh, the post hoc test here under the post hoc uh, button, that is for your between subjects factor. So only gender is listed here. So if you wanted to do a post hoc on gender, then you would have to use the post hoc dialog. And if you wanted to do a post hoc on the within subjects factor, you would have to go into this options box. This is a slightly different um, box in the Windows version of SPSS. In the Windows version of SPSS, it's called EM means or estimated marginal means. But how you use it is the same. So in this case, you can select quizzes, your within subject factor. You can select compare main effects and then select Bomperoni. And that will give you your post hoc test for the within, within subject factor. And this is interpreted in the same way as before. I've gone over this in another video, so I won't go over it here.